Hello everyone, we are back and we are sitting here with Hannah Doreen, or Hannah Doreen, sorry that was my bad. Um, Hi, how's it going? Hi. Um, thanks for tuning in everybody. Um, I've got a couple questions for you Hannah. So starting off, originally you're from Rochester, New York, but I'm listening to your music and it's definitely like uh, Americana country ballads. Yeah. So where is that influence? Like, where did that come from? I don't know, yeah, I came to it later, and I guess not naturally, because I uh, I didn't listen to country when I was growing up, but I listened to a lot of folk music. Mm -hmm. My mom really loves, like, John Denver and Joni Mitchell and Towns Van Sant, and he was mm -hmm. kind of, he's one of those people that really kind of crosses over into the country realm, but it wasn't until college that I got into listening to a lot of classic country. Mm -hmm. I heard the um, Dolly Parton, Linda Ronstadt, nice. Emmy Lou Harris, Power Album Trio, and it was kind of bluegrassy country, and it just sort of was my gateway into album all. into, um, I just love the classic country feel. Yeah. Um, and Something were you about that just connected with me. Yeah. And so were you like, you were playing that music or you were playing music at the time and just... No, I was actually, at around that time I just got really into music history and I was okay. studying that in school. So um, I feel like country music history is very American in this way that's sort of interesting and fascinating and problematic and wonderful. And, you know, there's, I mean, there's just a kind of uh, unique thing about country music yeah. history so it was actually yeah. that part of it that I think I was drawn to as well as the sound and then I started realizing that I like singing it as well so. and because it's like there's songs that kind of get passed down mm -hmm. not necessarily like this is this song by this artist it's mm -hmm. kind of like songs that people all play yeah and right? I think that yeah that absolutely points out the the piece of it that I like which is that you can write a song and give it to somebody else mm -hmm. you could be like hey, they sound better on this than I do. I just wrote this song, but I want it to be the best version or that it can be. Or you could make a completely different version. It really kind of gets at the heart of that, why people cover music in the first place and why, you know, we have our musical influences, all of us. And uh, so cool. I think country, yeah, is a good space to talk about all that. Yeah. And so with your music, I mean, because you, you've written your own, so uh, what what is it that you're taking from that country music and like you're writing your own music, do you hope that like people cover it as well or is it like, are they songs that are very much um, you, like they're, they're your songs and mm. they, yeah, you know, I mean, you know what I, I'm saying? Yeah, you know, absolutely, you know? no, and I actually, I, I don't think about other people covering my songs, but I would love to be in that role that I was just talking about where, you know, I am writing for other people because that's not something I've done before. So far, I, yeah, I write for myself. Um, but I like to think that I'm kind of grabbing pieces of that classic country feeling, trying to think of what are those elements that are not uh, heard anymore, like certain grooves, certain uh, ways of singing, mm -hmm. things like that, and trying to mix those in with um, contemporary influences yeah. as well and see what happens. And a lot of that ends up being in the production of a song. So, mm -hmm. you know, those are all things I'm exploring and, uh, and it do it does involve other people and, yeah. and their sort of paths as well. So, cool. yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about where your music has taken you, because we talked a little bit about it earlier, you work with sound effects mm -hmm. and that, so that's, uh, you're working in senior homes and you're sort of bringing music to people that maybe music's not, like live music is not so accessible. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, one, like how did you get involved with that? And then two, uh, why, like why? why yeah, well, I guess, you know, as I've said, since I'm interested in music history, I was sort of naturally drawn to um, projects involving uh, kind of audience members that are older and have uh, sort of a historical lens that I don't on some of this music. 
So I really wanted to go and try playing in senior care facilities, also just as a way of like playing out more, having a different kind of venue. And um, so I tried that out a few times. I loved it. I started just booking those all throughout my day and kind of made that into my full-time work. Um, now my kind of organization sound effects is geared toward having being able to support other musicians doing mm -hmm. that as well. Yeah. Um, because so it's expanding, like, it's growing then. Yeah, so it good. is, it that's is. There's a yeah. lot going on and um, next year I think I'm gonna really be able to roll out uh, some new projects, being able mm -hmm. to bring musicians in to do some one-on-one -on -one work with some right. of these folks who don't have a lot of access to music anymore, but there's so much appreciation for it there, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, once you love music, you don't stop. Yeah, absolutely. And most musicians have some kind of, uh, like, genre that they could tap into mm -hmm. that goes back, you know, many decades. And that's, I think, a really fun thing for musicians to do, too. Cool. Well, so there's that. And then there's, where is it taking you outside of that? I mean, so you're going to be opening up at the Aggie Theater yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. And we'll talk about that later. But, um... You've gone around Colorado. Have you gone around the U.S. a little bit? Yeah. Um, and what's what is that? What has that been for you? What's that experience? Yeah, I mean, part of the work of of kind of making a venue out of these senior care facilities for me is also showing that that you can live in a town and stay put if you want to. Mm -hmm. That you don't have to tour all the time. And I think most musicians really enjoy touring. But sometimes you can get caught in this place of feeling stuck like you have to just yeah. to to get by mm -hmm. um so i feel like we need you know new ways of being able to feel stable if we want as well so um i've traveled with my music a bit and right now i'm kind of focusing on trying to be sort of a like holistic version of an artist who where i tour when i really kind of want to go out and, and play tunes out mm -hmm. and about and, and have something new to share, but that when I don't um, and I'm working a little bit more on building these connections with community or, um, or writing new songs, that I kind of have the space to do that yeah. uh, here and can also make a place for that for everyone else. So I'm certainly working on new things myself but but trying to establish new models for musicians to just to you know feel stable and be sustainable. Right. I mean or your own model. I yeah. mean the thing is right. I've seen that I've seen that with artists like a couple of artists that I've known that uh, like Devendra Benhart or like mm -hmm. Home Shake who yeah they don't they don't try to tour all the time because because they need to or something. They just they tour when they want to share it. Yeah, exactly. And um, that's something that yeah I think is important so yeah you're right yeah and and it's possible and it's possible yeah. yeah and when touring you can think of new places to play too um mm -hmm. you know play at a nursing home during the day and then play your show at like the festival that night or whatever yeah it's cool um so while we're talking uh, you know we're talking about all these things but I also want to talk a little bit more about your music specifically mm -hmm. um I was listening to your track the darkest part of me Mm -hmm. um, it's good. Thank it's you. really good. Um, but I noticed that you you never really defined the darkest part, and <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> and uh, um, this made me reflect on the idea that like maybe uh, the darkest part of ourselves we don't realize until like another person is a part of mm -hmm. who we are, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I kind of wanted to reflect on that idea with you. Like, do you feel like people bring? darkness out of us or um you know like is it something that's like stagnant within us and then people bring it out of us or like yeah i know i definitely think i mean i, f I feel like people are one of the biggest influences yeah. on each and, other. and you can cut me off if they i'm are. totally reading too no no no, no, no. Your, i think that song. no I, I think it's interesting because that's that's certainly what it's about is that mm -hmm. i feel like there are people that like want to bring out the best things in you or you know I was talking about this recently with someone where you can have um, we were talking about the word like manipulation mm -hmm. and you know typically that's seen as a, 
a pretty negative thing, like if you're manipulating someone into doing something mm -hmm. or trying to get something out of them, that doesn't sound good. But at the same time, sometimes you can use that same uh, sort of those techniques to get really, to, you know, to like help someone become mm -hmm. um, a version of themselves that they want to be, yeah. I think. And so, yeah, I, I certainly feel like there's people in your life where maybe in retrospect or 2020 vision you're like or, yeah retrospect you're you're like oh that they didn't want good things for me and they were trying to you know to manipulate me in a bad way mm -hmm. whereas on the flip side I feel like you can surround yourself with people that that might have strong influence on you but aren't trying to like like feed your dark side or whatever yeah. if you're if you're using that language so, totally. yeah cool yeah. yeah, I was listening and I was like, woo. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this, this is the question I asked earlier, um, and I want to come back to it, is, yeah. so you're a fan, are you a fan of Joe Pug or Jeff Buckley? Yeah, yeah, so... I mean, do you, that, they, they influence you at all, or are you just kind of like, you listen to them and you know their music is good? Um, <laughs> I know their music is good. Uh, <laughs> I feel like uh, Jeff Buckley is an interesting one because... Um, yeah, I think that my first uh, experience with him was definitely the Hallelujah song, which is Leonard Cohen's. Yeah, originally. And, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people know him for that, but I hadn't really dug in. And for, for me, I think he's a huge inspiration in the realm of live performance, because mm -hmm. listening to his live album, um, where did you say it? What it, it was live at Sine. Sine, where is that? I'm pretty sure it was like a... It's like a, well, I don't want to, I'm not exactly Speculate. sure, but I thought it was just like a <laughs> cafe setting, kind mm. of people just all sitting there. It seemed intimate, yeah. Very intimate, yeah. But, uh, you know, that sort of live art of being a musician and a person on stage and somebody that everybody is watching and listening to sometimes talk, like there's something about him in that sense where I feel like you can you see performers who are, um, it's like they're reaching out and they want the whole audience to be part of something, or they're like allowing the audience to be part of whatever they're doing yeah. in this sort of internal. He just struck me as one of those people where he is like, I'm going to do this, like whether you're in the room or not, yeah. and you can yeah. watch if you want. You know, like it was, it was really like powerful. Because I was just, thing. and I think we, Tim and I were talking about that is when people when artists they're just there and they're like this is what i've made yeah and if you would like to experience it or you want to be a part of that like please yeah be a part of it yeah and, and it's it's an organic and amazing experience yeah i think yeah. there's a confidence behind that that's really yeah. interesting and it's one style that i think is pretty effective when i'm you know experiencing music that i'm feel connected to and he he definitely i think kind of embodied that i bring him up though because on you have a song, uh, it's the, it's the name of Smile in it. Uh, oh, like all the all things the, I've all done. Things I've done yeah. yeah, the finger picking on that. Mm -hmm. It's melancholy. Mm. Just like a lot of like Jeff Buckley stuff. Melancholy. Yeah. Yeah. Melancholy is the right <laughs> word. Is it the right word? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, and it kind of embodies that. And so I just kind of wanted to bring that up to see if that was an influence or maybe just somebody that just inspires you, which sounds like it does. Certainly, Very yeah. Cool. Very cool. Um, okay, I've been waiting for this. Behind the lyric this is a little section I made up for an interview. <laughs> so let's see how it goes. Behind uh, the lyric. <laughs> behind the lyric. No pressure. Um, there, in, in, the, in that same song, uh, you said, quiet is comfort and silence is madness. Mm. And, and I talked to my friend a lot about that. Um, but I wanted to hear where that was inspired by, like, what, or what that was inspired by for you. And if you, or if you want to make it more general. Yeah, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, I think that, um, I was trying to get at the idea of, uh, sometimes, especially in the context of a relationship, it can be either completely wonderful to be able to be quiet in a room with someone, um, but if it's tip the scales and... Uh, and there isn't like 
that sort of quiet communication mm -hmm. level, then it's silence and it's awful. Or, you know, that there can be different sides of the same thing, which is you know, two people not talking yeah. to each other. Cool. That's kind of the conclusion we yeah. came to. <laughs> so that, that's cool. Okay. Um, so behind the lyric. Yeah, behind the lyric, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you've got a show coming up, yeah. and it's very soon. Yes. It is microphone. It is on Sunday, opening for the Shook Twins at the Aggie. Sweet. With Mama Magnolia. Yeah. yeah. Are you excited for that? Because that's going to be different. Excited. That's going to be different than the setting maybe that you're used to. <laughs> no, I'm really excited. Um, I feel like it's going to be a special show because um, they're doing so the. The bill is that they're doing a tribute to Dirty Dancing yeah. for Halloween, yeah. Yeah. which I am so excited to find out what that means exactly. Yeah. And um, I think it's kind of going to be a good little inspiration for uh, doing a couple tributes of my own, So, which is Ooh. falls in line with music history and my passion for that. So yeah. I, I'm glad um, that that's the direction of the show. You, and can I we get a sneak wait. peek? Like, or is, is there anything you have in mind? or? <laughs> I could play something for you if you want. 